All right, welcome on back, faithful. This is gonna be the one of the final tutorials on our torso um, that we're gonna be doing. This actually, this will officially be the last torso for excuse me, torso. This will be the last video for construction of the torso. I will be doing one more uh, build video involving the torso, but it's gonna be part of a buckling and strapping uh, video. So this will officially be the last of the assembly that we're gonna need to do on this thing. Um, last time, you saw us working on the whole, uh, I guess, front half of the torso. We worked on the entirety of the chest there, piecing all that together and how it's supposed to kind of uh, crimp in on the middle there and then flex out on the sides. We're now going to be working on the back here. This is our, our entire back. I don't know if you can see it too well there. We're going to be doing the jetpacks here, as well as the full shoulder region, the side part here that comes down on the lower part of your torso and then the center piece here in the back. We're gonna be doing all of this assembly here. I'm gonna show you how this all comes together. I'm gonna to turn this here so you can get a good angle on this. Is it there? And the way I'm gonna tell you guys to do this is just like I've done here. You're gonna build the entire back half by itself and you're gonna build the entire front half by itself and you're going to leave them separate. Do not combine the two of those together permanently. Because I'm going to show you how to put buckles on the sides um, down here by your lower ribs. And then I'm going to show you how to do the snaps up top, little center push buttons, uh, excuse me, center push buckles up top for the shoulders. It'll make getting in and out of this thing really, really easy. Uh, it does come with one caveat, though. You will need a friend to help you get dressed or at least buckle your chest in. Uh, but if you're going to a convention, as I said last time, there's going to be plenty of people around that will, that will be willing to lend you a hand. Plus, you'll probably be there with friends anyway. So bear that in mind. Okay, as you saw in this one here, this is the, I guess it'll be the left side going over like that on a person. Um, I built this one, or put this one all together last night so you can see, we're gonna be building this exact thing right here. I'm gonna show you how this whole thing comes together here. Um, before I do though, I wanna say, if you're building your own suit of armor along with me here, mine is scaled, I have a 42 inch chest and with the motocross gear that I wear, it comes out to be around 45 inches. I left the scale exactly the way it was in the um, in the actual file itself. I did not up it or uh, lower it. The one I'm making right here is 10% smaller and I'm making it for my wife. So she's about a foot shorter than I am. I'm six foot two and three quarters. So knock a foot of that off and shrink her by about 100 pounds. And that's where you've got it. So if you're trying to figure out sizes, you have to fiddle with it. But if you're close to my size, that's what you can work with. Oh, and he's got his ball. Hey babe, do you want to grab that from him, please? <laughs> Hold on a sec. All right. What? You want to grab his ball? He's making a tongue noise. Yeah, I will. Thank you. Okay. So this here is going to be our little bottom section right there, and that's going to be what curves around to the front and hooks in to the bottom part of the chest piece. And then this is going to be going over top of the shoulder here. And actually, I left the piece over here. I'll grab this for a second. Oh yeah. Okay. This is a piece here that is not called out inside the, um, the file at all, but you want this piece, okay? Now this piece here I've designed with this opening in mind. Where these two sections come together, you're going to want about a quarter of an inch gap right there through the entirety of that whole thing. You can see right here, I've got a quarter of an inch gap, maybe just barely over there. And that's uh, more of an aesthetic choice than anything. It matches up more closely with um, Chief Suit of Armor. It looks really cool. Adds some really cool angles and some shadows inside there. So I just took two um, sections of EVA foam and I glued them together. A little sandwich like that. So it's double thick there. Uh, I made it long enough so that it can fit inside here and have plenty of room to connect with the upper section here. And make full and firm contact with that there. So, with that said, let's go ahead and put the sucker together. Okay, we'll go ahead and do the top part here first. And what I like to do is kind of dry fit it first, figure out where I'm gonna want it to sit here. And kind of, as I showed before, just like that. And I'm gonna mark this here with a pen, right where I want that to sit. So a ballpoint pen works the best. All right. My little cat is going crazy. And as I said, I want a quarter of an inch gap here. So, plug it into the other side here, figure out where you want that gap to be. 
again, do it a quarter of an inch. Just gonna mark it here with the pen so I know right where I am. I'm gonna mark that with a T for the top so I don't get confused. All right, as always, we're working with Loctite five second super glue. This is a professional grade super glue liquid here. Um, it bonds on a molecular level with this foam and it is the best thing that I've found for constructing using EVA foam. Um, you will wanna go back through and reinforce all the inside of every seam with hot glue just to add some more strength to it. But this is the best for doing really clean seams. All right. All right, you gotta go, kitty. Ah, 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 out of the kitchen. <laughs> going crazy. He is going nuts. All right. So this here, a little bit of this goes a long way. Go ahead and hit the entire perimeter, of the upper section there. Kind of streak it through here a little bit, like that. This, the contact gets made really, really quickly. So make sure you've got it lined up right and then press in real fast and hold. Just like that, just give it a firm squeeze there. And it should only take just a few seconds to go. Uh, for any of you who are wanting to build a suit of Spartan armor for yourself, you can find links to all the files that I use in this specific build down below in the comment section, excuse me, in the, uh, info, the uh, info section of this video, as well as a link to Pretzel's Locker where you can find pretty much any other variant of Spartan armor that has been in any of the Halo games. You can find them there. Also, there should be a couple links below to Papakura Builder and Papakura Viewer, or Designer and Viewer. And then I think I've got links inside there as well to little foamy sheets that I use for detail sections like this here and that right there. You can find those at Michael's or at um, Walmart. Okay, so that's attached there. Let's go ahead and do this section now. Same concept as before, your outline done here, because it is a flat section, we're gonna go right to the edge with this here, and it's gonna be on the inside, so nobody's gonna see this. Only you're really gonna know it's there. And just like that. For those of you who don't know me, I am Angel Legend. AKA Eric Rolon, AKA Spartan 117. And I really enjoy building cosplay suits of armor. Um, specifically, I love building suits of Halo armor. And as I've said in many videos, my favorite is the Mark VI from Halo 3, because of the strong muscular look it's got. But I do have a soft spot as well for the Mark VI from Halo 4. Okay, on the inside here, I'm gonna put a little bit of glue and kind of pin the sides in, just so they don't go anywhere. And you have to forgive the noise as my little cat Haru here is uh, seeing fit to mess with daddy during his filming. <laughs> yes, I see you there. Yes, I know. I know. This video is going to be starring you in a second. All right, there. It's pinned and hold. And, you know, I'm going to give just a little bit of hot glue inside here, I think. Just for my own. And use a piece of cardboard because I didn't bother to cut myself a smoothie piece. Oh no, bad angel legend. So I'm gonna use just a little piece of cardboard here. This is just to smooth out my glue that I'm using here along the seams. And let's see. Come on, hold for me, baby. And by the way, EVA foam is gonna try and fight you <laughs> if you're Pressing in really hard on an area that um, has a bit of rigidity to it, just expect it to fight you a little bit on that. Hit a little bit of hot glue inside here. The hot glue gun that I'm using, I've got it, it has the ability to do high heat and low heat. I've got it set for low heat. Um, if you set it for high heat, it's going to stay liquid for way too long, and it it sucks having to wait that long uh, for this to dry, especially on EVA foam. It adds an extra level an extra level of frustration that you don't need. So set your gun for low heat or just buy a low heat hot glue gun. And as I said before, you're gonna reinforce every single seam that you'll do on your suit of armor. Doesn't matter what the piece is, reinforce everything with hot glue. Um, I'm not gonna do the entirety of this here because I'm gonna try and save some time. Um, 
But just know that when I come back from this, I will be reinforcing everything. And that's holding just fine. Okay, so there we are. Same kind of shape here. As you can see, we've got the jetpack installed on this one here. Oops, hold it sideways so you can see the, the similarities there. Okay, as for the jetpack, your point of reference on this here is gonna be this little ridge right there. It pretty much matches up with that ridge here. So when it comes to putting this on here, best way to do is try and hit right in the center of it, okay? Um, you may have to turn it just slightly to accommodate that little round pack there. Um, but for the most part, you can hit this right in the center. And I will probably grab my pen here as well, again, and mark myself my sections. I want. And I'm checking my first one here to make sure that I've got it in the right place again. It is up slightly at this here. Uh, and let's see. There we are. Okay. So that's where I want it. I'm going to go ahead and mark kind of my side here with my pen just so I know where I need to hit with these pieces. And this will help me lay this a whole lot easier. Okay. And the bottom portion here will also make contact with that jetpack. Okay. First off, though, we're going to go ahead and glue this entire surface here and then stick it where we've marked it right there on the jetpack. Um, if you if you've made both your jetpacks separately and you can't remember which one goes on which side, this little side, um, this is I guess be like a stabilizer vent. That one goes on the outside. Okay, so if you're doing the left side, you're using this side here, and vice versa. Just make sure the stabilizer is on the outside of it. All right. <clears throat> Again, I'm going to go the entirety of this outline of this shape here, all the way to the edge. Do all this here. And you slash this through the middle. And all right. You're going to get one shot with this because this glue attaches incredibly quickly. So make sure you've got it lined up right. Press in and hold. Really push in hard on this one here because we want it to make contact all the way up there in that little crevasse, if you will. So press in nice and firm. And because it is a flat surface up against another flat surface, it's going to adhere really quickly. Um, you can, if you like to, go back through with a little bit of hot glue on the sides. Um, you probably won't need to because this... Um, this Loctite glue will adhere it very, very well. And this isn't a section that's gonna be bending or flexing at all, so you really shouldn't have to worry about it popping off. So, bear that in mind. Oops. All right. And you can see on here at the bottom how it kind of pulls away. We want this to be pretty rigid and strong as well, so we're gonna put a little bit of glue underneath here. The best way to do that is just kind of pull it up, see where the contact is being made. Show it on this one here. I won't be able to show it as well. But you can see what the contact is being made there. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this up here. I'm going to put it on that little ridge itself because it is protruding up. And just kind of what I would say is glob on a little bit here. If you need to, you can smooth out the excess. Um, I finally went and grabbed a few of my little smoother pieces. I cut several of these out to smooth that glue in, helps it dry quicker and disperse better. And once you got it set. Press in and hold. Right on that ridge there. And you really do, as the glue indicates on it, five seconds. You really do need just about five seconds. And there we are. Nice and firm hold there. I'm just okay if you have a little bit of a gap there. Um, it looks cool. You know, don't really worry too much about that. If you want, you can put a little bit more glue on that side there. And this is the right side of it. So if you can imagine these coming together like that there. Or from the back, I guess. Let's see. From the back, here we are. Just like that. Okay. Now when it comes to putting this middle section inside here, um, Master Chief's suit of armor, if you're building it directly from like the games, it looks like this here with that middle section up this high. You can see where that line's up there. It's like to the very top of these two points right there. What I'm gonna suggest though, is to put it about an inch and a half 
an inch to an inch and a half below that. Reason for is with this specific helmet, there is a little bit of a not like a nodule in the back of it, um, this little protruding section. And if you set this piece here that high up, every time you bend your helmet, your neck back, your helmet's gonna make contact because of that little, um, I guess, raised section of the back. It's gonna make contact with this here, and it is really annoying. You'll keep banging your head all day. You'll have to really consciously pull your shoulders back. So hopefully this will keep you from um, having restricted uh, movement with your neck. So what I'm going to suggest to do is while I would ordinarily put it about, hopefully you can see this, about that high, I'm going to suggest to bring it down to about here. So that's a, right about an inch, maybe just, just over an inch down from this top corner right there. And so you can kind of use this little window here as a point of reference for yourself when you bring this down. So it's right about like, right in there like that. And we're just gonna attach one side and then the other. Okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and mark this at the height that I want it so I know right where it's supposed to go. And okay. Get with my ballpoint pen. And here we are. And just so, bless you, just so I don't lose my height here, I'm just going to kind of measure out both sides here. And that looks to be right about the same there. Mark it on this side. All right. That will be even. Okay. Now, for this one, when you do attach this, you're going to have to go back inside there with a hot glue gun and get it down into this little area there, probably coming from the back. You're going to really want to enforce the daylights out of this piece with hot glue because this will it will need to be strong to be able to support you moving around all day, okay? So it's going to hit right here. It'll hit right there primarily and right here and then along that back little section there. So what I'm going to suggest to do is put glue here it right there do some right along this edge here like this and then some right there for starts and here we go go and corner in make sure that it makes contact and press and hold and we'll give that a few seconds there Again, as I said, you're gonna bear in mind that this, your spine will be resting inside there. So we've already reinforced the crap out of this piece here. So now you're just gonna kind of add a little bit more tension to it um, with your body gonna be inside here now. But once we have the clips built onto the side here, onto the top here, it will make sure that the entire thing stays like a, like a hard shell. So you shouldn't have to worry too much about this back section flexing. It should work very, very well. Okay, you can kind of see how it's coming there, just like that. And do this side here now. And lay it down here. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. Hopefully I'm not obscuring myself or getting in my own light here. Right. Oops. Be aware also if you're working with Loctite Super Glue, you're gonna you're gonna get it on your fingers. Just a hazard of working with it. Um, comes off pretty easily with palm olive or Dawn. All right. So again, a little bit down here, right there, a little bit over here, and then along this ridge. Same thing as before. Pressing this corner in where we've marked it. So right there, lock it in, and press, and hold it right in there. And it helps if you do like I'm doing here and kind of set the piece down because it can settle on its own here, and you can kind of find out where you're level and also kind of helps you keep the entire thing even. So be aware of that. With uh, this torso piece, the, in, the entire name of the game is symmetry. You want this to be a symmetrical shape. And I know I said it already, I've said it several times, you will want to come back and reinforce all these little joints that we just made. And know that you're gonna be covering it up with Plasti Dip, plus this will be on the inside here, so no one is gonna know that's there. No one's even gonna see that. The only person who knows it's there is you and God. So by all means, reinforce it. Like I'll probably fill that entire little window there up with glue to make sure that it holds to this here. All right. 
Anyway, guys, there we have it. That is the constructed jetpack section of our torso armor. That is the entire back half of it right there. And remember, you're going to want to set this, like I said, about an inch down from the top there. That way your helmet is not connecting with it every time you move your head back. I'll show you here again from the side. You can see it here. From the back there. We're just going to sit. Front on view there. Imagine this going over the shoulders of whoever is going to be wearing it, and then this wrapping around the lower rib cage there, which we're going to probably extend these out when we put the clips on it. But yes, there it is, guys. Go back through and reinforce this thing if you're building along with me. Um, thank you also for checking out this video. I hope it's been beneficial for you guys and saving you some time. I know when I started my torso build, it took me five days. Um, probably the first two of those was spent just staring at the shapes and figuring out how I was going to make them work. So hopefully I am saving you a ton of time in that regard. Um, once again, my name is Angel Legend, a.k.a. Eric Rollon, a.k.a. Spartan117. If you have not yet, please smash that like button below and smash that subscribe button. Next video, we are going to be addressing buckling and strapping for the, I guess, the torso, the shoulder sections with the biceps built into them, as well as, I believe, the belt. So keep an eye out for that, you guys. Um, and gals. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Take care.